And how many people died here while it did last? Yeah, two. Who shot who and why? I don't want to get into that. Okay. Did you see it? Yeah. And that's a product of this, the living on the streets, man. Every day, Do you think he's overdosing on something, something? like this. I don't think he's overdosing. I think he's experiencing what he's experiencing. With the family pushing their, their baby carriage right through it. Right past I have a question for you, sir. What are your thoughts on that? You're walking with your family, you see something like that. Is that a concern of yours as a Seattleite? Uh, it is, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you want one? This who is wants, real? Who wants free fed and all? Line up. Can't make this line stuff up. up. I mean, he has a bag of. Line up. Come wait, on. Wait, wait, why, why are you doing this? Free moves. Line up. This is clearly a chaotic evil force at play here. I've never seen anything like this. Get in line. Get in line. Oh, go tell everybody to get in line. Hey, you guys wait, are gonna, why are you giving this? It's going to overdose someone. Because this, this is how you clean up the streets. You give it away for free. Yes. By trying to make them kill themselves. More about what? What your angle is and what you guys are up to? Violence or, or fentanyl? Gun violence? Everything. I support all of this. So let's kill everything with a smile. Got it. So you want them? This dude is a villain, bro. What's going on, y'all? So this video is basically just going to be kind of educational, honestly. Well, a lot of education in it because it's going to basically be showing you what happens if you defund the police. So, yeah. It's pretty ugly. But yeah, let's get into this one, man. Make sure that like button. Make sure you subscribe, whether you're new or you've been just lying around my channel for a little bit. Make sure you subscribe, man. Anyways, let's get into this video. I mean, let me know your thoughts as y'all are going through it. Or if you want to wait until afterwards, just you don't just wait until afterwards. So yeah, you can tell by just this right here before I even click play how crazy this video is about to be. And it's by Tyler. What's his name? I forgot. Tyler Oliveria? Oliveria? Yeah. Yeah, I said it right. Okay. This is Seattle, it. Washington. Potential overdose. Anyone have Narcan? This guy's still following us, by the way. I'm insane. Oh, whoa, whoa. I'm insane. Drug addiction. Ma'am, are you okay? Homelessness. Just understand that you guys are just one paycheck away from being out here, too. Racism. There's nothing wrong with being racist. Protests. <laughs> what? They said they're one paycheck. They're one paycheck away from being out there. Maybe not them, but the people that are in his similar living condition, yeah. Crime. <coughs> and being trafficked against my will. Chaos. Are you on fentanyl right Okay, I'm not going to, this is not going to be a video where I pause it 24-7, but you got, with the whole free Palestine thing, bro. Do you realize that there's not anywhere that they could possibly go, even if they did get out of there? So that protest it doesn't make any sense. But anyways, let's keep on going. Let's keep going. Right now, he's pooping. Wait, you're taking a poop and free fentanyl? They're out here just giving out free fentanyl. Really? It's a non-profit. Yeah. This, this is, is real? Who wants free fentanyl? Line up. This, this is, is how you clean up the streets. Three years ago in June of 2020, what? Seattle protests emerged following the death of George Floyd and denouncing racial injustice and police brutality. These protests were met with a heavy-handed police response using tear gas, glass balls, takedowns, and arrests as protests turned to riots and chaos and looting ensued. In an effort to placate protesters, the mayor surrendered five blocks of the Capitol Hill neighborhood and evacuated the zone completely, leading protesters to occupy the zone, banning police from entering, and declaring independence as the Capitol Hill autonomous zone, Chaz, later renamed CHOP, as protesters vowed to occupy the zone until Seattle's police budget was cut in half, but after a little over three weeks of chaos, Chaz had four shootings, rape, robbery, and two murders, including the death of a 16-year-old boy Oh, I bet. In June 29th, led to Seattle's mayor to issue an executive order to dissolve Chaz and restore order to the neighborhood. But how did Seattle get to this boiling point? How did these events permanently impact the city? And what does the future of Seattle look like when considering the problems it faces today? Before I meet up with one of the founders of Chaz to understand the initial goals of the protests, I met up with Seattle journalist Jonathan Cho. You're a liar. Get this. Get this. Anytime there's somebody who has green or purple hair, I get a little nervous. To go boots on the ground and see the state of chaos in Seattle today. You know so basically, that's just like a little town of mental illness. Okay. You know, I, I've been threatened. I've been chased with a guy wielding a baseball bat. Right there, here's a baseball bat. He came charging at me. This guy right here. Knives. You got a knife! Okay, okay, okay. Even nunchucks. I got a dude coming at me with nunchucks. I will say, for the most part, the homeless out here are just trying to survive. Once we go in, 
it is treacherous. So you're gonna be dodging trash, garbage, needles. drug needles. Yeah. Oh, that's a given at these encampments. Yeah. And then the traffic, man. It is just absolutely insane that the homeless are living right next to cars going 70, 80 miles an hour. I just want you to be aware of what we're about to okay. face. We are entering at our own risk, and clearly there are several people here right now. So if you see the propane tanks right there, that's obviously dangerous, right? Oh yeah, there are fires here at these encampments weekly. Sure. It's a total liability for this neighborhood. Okay. That looks like it'd do some damage. You ready to run with us, sir? Fuck that. Maybe we put that down, though? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll put that down. I just wanted to show you. No, that's um, intense. Yeah, he's bra they're brave for doing that, bro. Because you know how dangerous this is, what they're doing? They got a live wire. I don't know, I don't know if it's live or not. It's definitely live. Going into the... Bro, what the... F I mean, this is a club with nails. I mean, this is like uh, Walking Dead style here. Yeah. So I'm going to leave this out here. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, my name's Jonathan Cho, local journalist. I just want to introduce you to my friend Tyler. Is that for you guys to protect each other? Is, is there conflict out here? You know, uh, there's always conflict, bro. Uh, do you use anything out here? Like fentanyl or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. And as we talked to this guy, what appeared to be the mayor of the camp, pulled up behind us and asked us what we were up to. If there's anything the city can do to help you guys get permanent housing? Yeah, okay. Okay. Would you like us to, to get out of here? Is that... Okay. Would you tell him over here, man? Okay. Fair enough, man. We took the hint and peeled out before things got violent. Everyone here had weapons, baseball bat with nails in it. Look, he's carrying the club. Okay. I think it's time to move. He might be coming in our direction. Okay. Okay. At this moment, I was unsure if I was about to get killed, but it turns out he wanted to give me an early Christmas present. I give it! He just wanted to talk. What's the biggest thing that can be done to help you? Personally, uh, let me get one of those little tiny homes. Are there programs, Jonathan, that he could enter right now? If he said, "Hey, I will be sober. Please give me housing." <laughs> detox. Like detox to just right sends. Detox just sends me right back out. You know the problem though is you don't have enough people to walk with Devin through the journey. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the challenges. Is you can't just put somebody in detox and then just release them back onto the streets. Yeah. Devin will agree. The vast majority of people out here are here because they're lacking the community. It's the or broken family. relation or family. The broken relation. This is truly sad, though. It's truly sad, but some people do it to themselves, though, man. You, like, for the most part, out of all the people that I knew that went homeless, they did it to themselves, bro. Just thinking that, you know, they could get away with anything and all other types of stuff, bro. Relationships, and that's the it's still sad, though. That is not being pushed. It's not an affordable housing issue. Devin, is, if you were just given an apartment, would that solve all your problems? No. What can anyone walking the streets or anyone who may see this do to help you get out of the situation? Just understand that you guys are just one paycheck away from being out here too. Yeah? Yeah. This is wild. I've never I've never seen anything like this. Oh, uh, welcome to Seattle. They're human beings, man. Yep. They're somebody's mother, father, daughter, son, uncle, aunt. If we look at each person that way instead of as a criminal or a <laughs> drug addict, we have a better <laughs> Why is he still holding it? Like, why is he still holding it? I would have been through that away or something chance to get to know their story and help them get off the streets we got a gift let's keep going let's go i'm gonna put this in the trunk after narrowly avoiding a negan style execution we began yeah. to enter homeless right next to the highway and realize we were being followed they're obviously um they're, they're following us bro so okay to move. Tyler, okay all right we gotta go all right so it's for real we gotta go keep in mind they may be right behind us there's a guy coming this way there's another guy yeah. Just be, let's be aware of our surroundings. Seriously, watch, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Literally, we are at an overpass right now. This is wild. Going to these camps, you have to have an exit strategy. I know all the entrances and exits. That's one. We know where to go. And just know that there are moving cars right now next to us going 80 miles an hour. As we stumbled upon a tent with a bucket full of what looked to be human feces, the stench was so bad, we began to wonder uh. if someone had died inside. Here, but flies here. You think someone's dead in there? I don't know. It might be worth a wellness check. I don't know. There could be someone dead in there. Uh, we have found bodies in these tents before. Is anyone in there? Hey, guys, welfare check. Welfare check, guys. You guys okay? Seems like no one's there. Needle caps all, all across the ground here. And right off the freeway. Look at this. I don't even know how they get their stuff here. How you doing, sir? Do you feel safe living right next to the freeway here? Not really. No? Because uh, at any point in time, there could be a traffic accident, car to slide up, and sure. take out one of the houses. Will the city ever come here and clean? No. They, what they pretty much do is they come and they clean up trash and stuff like that, and that's pretty much it. Have you ever seen or known anyone who's gotten hit by a car? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? How common is that? Um, very. Very? Very common. 
You see two propane tanks right there. And look, I mean, look at right this. across the street. We've got single family homes. This is unacceptable in our society. Yeah. And I couldn't live there, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. If I anywhere right here, I, those are nice houses, but I could not live right there. Oh, y'all can't see them. These houses right here, I would not live right here, bro. Never. Never, bro. You wouldn't catch me dead there. The thought of just going outside and just getting hit by a needle from a hobo that lives right here? No. If you look right now, look. Okay. You have multiple pieces of luggage. It's not the same name on all these. It's not the same name at all. Stolen. It's been an epidemic right now where you have luggage theft. Luggage theft. The cycle is the addicts go into a Target or a Walmart or Walgreens. We have this person taking everything from that corner. Oh my God. Then they'll steal items, then they'll hit the streets, a very busy area, sure. and sell this stuff for pennies on the dollar. And the buyers are the little Asian grandmas, because they want the deals. Sure. It's like the people who are working who go into these neighborhoods, and they're fueling the crisis as well. Wow, check this out. These homeless tents were built right next to premium Seattle real estate, and some of them even had a multi-million dollar view. Wow, that is You can also argue that camping out here gives you the best views of the city. Look at, me, look at this. That is truly epic. While drug addiction kept many of these people on the streets, we stumbled upon this giant fortress that led me to wonder if some of these people actually preferred living on these streets. This is a pretty epic fortress you have here almost. How long did it take to build this? It's not done yet. You feel safe out here? It almost feels like home, I guess. Is fentanyl the biggest drug out here? The biggest drug out here? Yeah. Probably oxygen. Oxygen? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Okay. But he's high on life, I guess. Yeah. How's it going? Okay. Is it too cold for you out here? Not in this blanket. Okay, fair. Do you need any help from anyone? And if so, what? What? how could someone help you? Well, I don't need any more help. Okay. I got all the things I need. Notice what he said. He said he's choosing this. Oh, the lifestyle. The lifestyle. Sure. That is the piece that certain homeless advocates don't want out there. And what do you do about these people in society? I don't know. These are the people who've given up on society. They're done. They don't want to work anymore. They don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to pay their bills. You've got the activists saying, oh, if you just give everyone here housing, we can solve the crisis. Well, the problem is, as you've clearly encountered, there are people who want to stay out here. Yeah. What do you do about them? After establishing homelessness was, in some cases, a voluntary lifestyle, Jonathan took me to an even more extreme example of this beside a railroad. Look, Look at all those propane tanks. Holy smokes. Smokes. Yeah, guys, Whoa. Guys, here it is. Come over here. We should assume everyone here has weapons. They do not want us here. And I've already established some relationships, but I don't know if my guys are still here. So we're walking through a heap of trash, and I'm ready to run if necessary. There are animals in here, too. This is the only other issue, guys. There are a lot of stray dogs here. Protocol if things get shaky. F sprint for your life, all right? That's are weapons illegal where they're at? Like... Uh, I, I would props to props to Tyler, bro, because I wouldn't be doing this without a weapon. Swastika? Yeah. Wow. And as we approached the summit of this hill, we encountered this dude, power tools in hand, appearing to weld something car related. After Jonathan's quick use of level 99 charisma, we had unlocked safe passage to explore the area. Yeah, I, I just wanted to show you. I mean, these guys are all self sufficient. Everyone's running on like generators here, yeah. there's power, there's electricity. It seemed like some of these homeless people just didn't want to be part of society. But after driving to a homeless camp right outside a residential neighborhood, I met a pregnant woman who wanted help to get off of the streets but could not receive any. My niece was illegally evicted. I get it. Illegally. They, didn't I just tell you no, what? you told me. I get okay, it. Yeah. Her, this is not because of fentanyl. No, I understand that. Or any of that. She has I nothing to do with the drug use, though. So please understand no, that. No, I understand that. Hi there. Hi. Um, I've heard you're pregnant and you're in need of housing. Yes. Have you looked for housing since? Yes, yes I have. Yes. yes. What was the response given? Well, uh, nothing. Nothing? She's There's... in a tent. <laughs> you can't tell. What would you recommend she do? She's pregnant. She's on the streets right now. She wants housing. Have you considered going... God bless her soul, man. That's, that's sad. To other outreach groups or other nonprofits yes, like yes, Salvation yes. Army, yes, Union Gospel yes, Mission. Yes. What are they saying? I know Union Gospel Mission would potentially take you in. Nobody want to get no f***ing nasty mission. It's dirty. It's unsanitary. Shut up and stay in that tent, man. She trying to better her life. You tell me something. I'm not going to go to that tent. Shut up. Stay in that tent, bro. 
cemetery. But that's not the case. See, okay, I got it. And I understand. I understand that may be their experience, but they can get you off the streets right now, and, and at least but, but for the sake of your baby. This, but, but I'm saying that, but there's multiple. There's, there's not. You don't get your own room. You know what I'm okay. saying? You're around right. everybody. I see. I'm saying there's, there's, there's germs. There's, there's. And I'm pregnant. I can get sick easily. There's. What kind of logic is that? You saying just because you're going to a housing where they can help you out, there's gonna be germs. There's gonna be bed bugs. You're living outside where there's the most germs and the most bed bugs. I'm not gonna to be too hard on Doc. You can tell that, you know. Yeah. But what kind of logic is that? So you know you'd rather that? take your chances out here than be in a place that where you have hey, to share a I'm a sorry, but this right room? here is a lot cleaner than okay. than, than the Salvation Army or, or, or shelter. Yes. I'm saying we want housing. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. You you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, man. I'm next person. Not tiny homes or shelters because they dictate your lives. They so, tell you who you can and can't. Forward. Are there any other qualifications like you guys can't use drugs as an example? That it's not about the drugs. It's about people dictating your lives. Okay? okay. So it's an American thing where I should be able to call my friend up and say, hey, come over. Not come over. Do you have ID? Show it at the front counter. Got oh, it. okay. You know, oh, that's okay. retarded. Like, Sorry, but I have a quick question, yeah. though. Do you understand how some people, 20 years. some people hearing you almost say that's a sense of entitlement, that there are people who are working two, three jobs? I'm just asking for the yeah. sake of asking. I never experienced it. People working two, three jobs that don't realize one bad day and they're this close. What would you wish for if, if you could talk to the mayor right now or the governor? To give me a place to live that is safe. There's urine, there's human feces, there's there's drug dealing going on. Is sure. that safer than this shelter that's allegedly unsanitary? Look, why do you think they're choosing to be out here? Because they don't want to follow the rules. Okay. Do you deserve an apartment in Seattle when there's so many others who are working sure. two, three jobs? And then, out of nowhere, a person frantically stalking us from behind, covering their face with cardboard, began yelling at us, asking who we were. Hi there. <laughs> here goes. Hi. Oh, what's your name? My name is Tyler Oliver. What's your name? What is your business? We have a YouTube channel. You came up here running. <laughs> So what is your business, bro? Mind your own business. Obviously, you have no business. Yeah. In front of of a criminal network, a criminal team. Talk to me. I have had for my safety. Okay. In front of the camel camp that is a drug ring. We, we saw that. We can blur your face. Would you like to talk to me? I will, but I won't be in front of the camel. Okay. You came here, you're visibly upset and concerned about your own safety? Less so about safety than I'm sick to death of picking up human poop. Sure. I'm sick to death of picking up garbage every single day, uh, including meth, the the foil, it's dangerous for dogs. Yeah. It's dangerous for people. There's unmitigated uh, shoplifting. The laws have to be changed because they're actually the police hands are taught. For clarity, you live in the surrounding area. Yes. You are a concerned, upset resident of this neighborhood that's yes. been overtaken by drug dealers, criminals, and homeless people. Is that accurate? Yeah, we're spending vast amount. I just thought about something. She's good, though. I mean, all the people that might see this that she's talking about, they're not going to see it because they're homeless, for one. Two, she sounds like, you, you tell us a girl now because you've got to put the voice thing on, but um, you can just tell, bro. And she's, she, she's good, but I understand why she doesn't want a short face, though. That makes a lot of sense, but. Uh. Amounts on Narcan. The firemen are coming out all the time. Overdoses. I'm sorry if you're not a teenager, you don't get Narcan. You don't get a second chance. I am not some crazy conservative, but things cannot end unless there are laws. This is not safe for me. Yeah. Thanks. This is not safe. Oh, okay. Got it. We're gonna get oh. going. All right. It's just not I get it. I'm curious though. Wh why did you go charging at us? I'm yeah. What? Because if I was gonna have some idiotic progressive thing like, oh, these poor homeless poor people, you know, they're the poor entitled. Yeah. I thought she was a far left activist coming up on us, sure. but I didn't realize she was a concerned neighbor. With residents of certain neighborhoods that were destroyed by homeless camps, it seemed like people affected firsthand by progressive liberal policies that encourage harm reduction, nonprofits that enable and subsidize the homeless lifestyle, and politicians that weaponize this compassion to gain votes. The people directly affected by homeless camps are so afraid of speaking out 
in fear of being labeled an alt-right conservative that hates homeless people. But intrigued by this unspoken tension felt throughout the city, I headed towards the Capitol Hill neighborhood where the events of Chaz began. But on our way there, Jonathan saw an abandoned Here we building go. being broken into, and we sped onto the scene to investigate further. So let's see what let's go. we find. We are entering the building right now. Right there. This could potentially be dangerous. Oh. You, you don't live here, sir. You're squatting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You want me to get my stuff? I mean, okay, they don't well, want people living here. Okay, well, I'll get my stuff. I got, I got, I got some clothes and stuff here, bro. So. Would you like to talk real quick now that we're here? We're not the police. No, 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 no. I'm saying I, I'll get my stuff and go. Uh, would you like to share why you're here? We just saw, we I'm, saw you. I'm homeless. You're homeless? Yeah. Okay, so you're squatting here? Yeah. The, the, the furniture was already here. Can we come in? Yeah. What's going on in here? There's a lot of pretty ladies, by the way. Okay. He said that was already here. You lying like him with that? You know you put that up. I just get it out. Okay. Yeah. And how did you find this place? I I was just walking by. Walking by. Yeah, and the door is open. And are these your cutouts? No, these ones aren't. Okay. You say you know the owner. <laughs> These was the owner. I want to talk to the owner. So we call the owner? Yeah, yeah, we should. Uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a job. Okay. Is that meth? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's my pipe, yeah. Okay. People have been squatting in here. This connects oh, I bet. I bet. to the yeah. rest of the motel. Oh, so there's a tunnel right here. Yeah. So we actually have a. Uh, yeah. They, 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 they tunnel all the way through. Yeah. Okay. So you know, about five years ago, I took up woodworking, and I can paint. I'm gonna make my work fifty dollars an hour, easy. Sure. So, so you have skills you'd like to use and get employed. Yeah, so, so, you know, so, some people are like, if you're 40, you're not going to fuck around that shit. And, and now I ended up homeless and I got the skills now, baby. Honest to God, it's pretty know. warm. And you can tell he has potential, but he's just a dumbass. You can, you can just tell. Honey, I'm not even going to get into detail on him. Him, he just looks like he just li likes to fuck his life up on purpose. He, he looks like he likes to fuck his life up on purpose. Uh, This right here is concerning. Because this just kind of... Hopefully those wigs aren't for them, because if you if you see my drift where I'm going at right now, at nighttime he might put those on and you know do what he has to do for money. I, I'm hoping that's not the case, but we're just gonna keep on pushing, man. We just goes in here. I want to put that out there. Did you did you sleep on a bed too? In here? Yeah. yeah, I mean you might as well see it. So we crawled through this dark tunnel in the building that led to an even darker room through another hole in the wall to get to this guy's room. But this got tunnel. Right, so you want to peel the curtain back a little bit? Right oh, there's lighting. Who's back here? No one. Okay. This is what I see. Okay, let's check it out. This is my sh You know, I, I got I got my steel saw and my tools right here. We got, got propane, propane tank, tank right here. here. Propane tank. Oh, oh, yeah. I got all your tools. Yeah, I'm a boss. You know You're a boss, brother. <laughs> I got my Ray Rays right here, my Ray Ban. Okay. So. Is that P right there? Yeah. That's disgusting. And this mother, he's worried about Ray Bans. The other dude had on some beats. Y'all priorities are all messed up. You got on Beats headphones. He got Ray Bans. But you're homeless, man. Nobody's impressed. Yeah, I, I didn't dump it out this morning. Hey, don't, okay, do, don't do the close up. Okay. <laughs> people, you know, some people save pee. I'm not saving my pee. Okay. I just haven't had it. Well, it's you know, some people do to drink it again because yeah, of the residue know, of wait, fentanyl. Wait, 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 on that level. Okay, not yet. Okay. Is <laughs> that, is that, have you got on that point <laughs> ever? Hit rock bottom already, bro. Well, I'm going up. Can I You see, and that's why I said he has potential, but you see what he just said? He said, I've already hit rock bottom. I'm on the way up. You can't, I, you can't hate on that, bro. You just can't. Boom, 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 kind of funny, but pants. I'm just curious. My toolbox. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Check it out. Yeah, bro. Don't. Oh, that's kind of badass. I'm saying if I get cold, I open the umbrella and I scoot that right over. Sure. If you had an address, do you think you could get a job? I, I, I want more than, than, than that, dog. I'm trying to build like a real fuck. Like something that's going to sustain my no, I believe after me. I wish him the best, man. I'll... I believe in it. And, and paint is what's going to do it. But, you know, this is where I'm going to make my fortune. The, the plan was to come and help Alex paint with, with terra painting. Okay. And, and, you know, it, it happened for like a month. But then it got, someone broke into the van and stole a bunch of sh So I got a chip on my shoulder, bro. Brother, thank you so much for sharing. Well, we now know you guys are at least straight. <laughs> are you concerned about this right here, the propane nope. tank? No? No, nah, man. I, I, I done firefighter training, like. Really? I got a lot of skills, right? 
Sadly, only 11 days later, the motel burned down. One can only wonder how it happened and what happened to these guys we met. We got back in the car and headed back to Capitol Hill. But Damn. Jonathan gave me a warning of what we needed. Oh, here we go. Here we go the part that's going to piss me off. Before we even get into this part, bro, I'm going to see what I got to say. The people that went rioting and protesting for George Floyd, y'all really shouldn't. Y'all waste y'all time on somebody that literally robbed people and was high on fentanyl as he was getting arrested. And he was slowly dying anyways before the cop even did what he did. It was messed up what the cop did, yes. But at the same time, ride over somebody that actually didn't do no damage to anything. Rob some or dumb and dumb. Nah, what did I say? I did I just say rob somebody that... Anyways, I'm going to rephrase that. Yeah, I don't care if I did or not. But anyways, protest for somebody that didn't rob something or didn't do no harm to the community. Whether it's black community, white community, community in general, bro. Protest for somebody that was actually innocent and a good citizen. Do it for that. So we're just going it off there. Not for somebody that just robbed people and to be all prepared types of stuff. For. I've been dealing with so much hate from just the activist class, the far left in this city. I mean, I've been doxxed. I just kind of recorded some phone calls I received. I just thought it was kind of hilarious. You know, here's what some of the folks said to me. I would really watch your back while you're out there doxxing everybody. Oh, yeah, threat. Threat. Absolutely. Comes back on you. You're a transphobic piece of shit. You you're mentally ill. Total whack jobs. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a soy boy. I mean, listen. <laughs> this guy's a soy boy. <laughs> I got fired because I covered a Proud Boys rally and um, I was accused of promoting this group when that wasn't the case. And afterwards, people just started harassing me and doxing me. They all know who I am. They don't want me near any of their initiatives or projects and they come after me. You have no life. Cause you got fired from Cairo. Cause you got fired from Cairo. Cause you're a proud boy. You're a liar. Get this. They can't stop me. I refuse to be bullied. And that's what these losers are. And we had finally made it Facts. to Capitol Hill. They're bullied. They don't realize that too, bro. They don't realize the fact that <laughs> they wanted to be accepted so bad. And then when they got accepted, they started to push their boundaries and wanted more than that they wanted to push their stuff on us like trying to demand people call them by their pronouns i'm not finna take a class or learn all the all the stupid pronouns bro. i'm not doing it to each their own i'm not homophobic or nothing but like that's just unnecessary bro. i'm not finna sit here and no no and, and and then they're trying to make it seem like if you don't like guys you're just automatically homophobic that's not the no just because you got a preference, you know, that's like me saying, oh, you don't like girls or oh, you don't like straight people. You're heterophobic. Like, no, bro. Like, leave people on vegans, too, bro. This is the LGBTQ plus capital of Seattle. <laughs> it's definitely one of them. It's got a highly concentrated area for the community. And they love you here. Uh, it depends who you ask. Okay. <laughs> the yeah. communists and the Marxists who are trying to take this over for their land, they want to put the homeless in the front lines and say, hey, you can't move us. That's harmful to the homeless. Basically, what Jonathan is saying is that organizers of Chaz used homeless people and strategically planted them in areas like Cal Anderson Park because, unlike a lot of protesters who might have gone home and slept in their homes at night during the protests, homeless people could be told to pull up a tent and stay there indefinitely. You've got numerous tents that have now moved. Got it. How you doing? You have this this kid here. Some hi there. Um, would you like to say hello? Not to you guys, no. Okay. Why is that? Not to you guys, nah. There's beef in the air that I'm unaware of. Do nah. He knows of who you are? I'm pretty sure he does. They don't like my style. They don't like the fact that I'm exposing them. And uh, they feel as though they are vigilante security guards and that they're protecting this BLM garden and this homeless encampment. How is this being allowed in a public park in a world-class city like Seattle? This is a takeover, Tyler. They got crab. They're eating crab. Is this Looks good. Tyler, I'm never, ever really concerned about the homeless. It's always the activists. Clearly anti-cop, okay? This is 
a, a trans flag with a black star and you have the entire trans movement now latching onto this as well and they'll use this language again you and i are on indigenous land this is a, a message to the white man that yeah. this belongs to Native Americans. And there's caps on the ground here. The homeless, the drug addicts. We're destroying the bathrooms, man. I mean, kids go in there to, you know, use the bathroom and they're- Not no more. You know what's crazy and also scary about homeless people or people of, in that group of people that are talking about the lefts? Most of them are wrong and they live in thinking that they're right. And even if they know that they're wrong, they're so big and they're so deep into it and their ego is a delusion that they're going to make it seem like they're right anyways to themselves you know, even if they know they dead wrong needles and needle caps and there's human feces just smeared yeah. against the walls it happens everywhere oh yep. someone's in there oh it happens everywhere got it so every major city if you one place where it doesn't happen then it's the place where they keep homeless out or or or, or they scam people for drugs are you doing fentanyl in there what kind of question is that I'm asking if you're doing fentanyl in there because the bathrooms are being used for drug use. That's everywhere in the United States. Is that a yes or no? No. Would you like to share your thoughts on what's going on here? I just did. It happens everywhere. Use every where. Who who should you have to do it? You may read the Bible and what would Jesus do? What do you think he would do? Why are you harassing people? Oh, here we go. You didn't want to talk to him, but you're gonna ask why is he shut up, bro. In the bathroom. He actually he is harassing people in the bathroom, that is true. Well, we were actually walking by and then he said... I said it's everywhere. We have it all on camera. Sure. These guys are just gonna try and get a rise out of you. I guess we're having like a, a camera standoff here. <laughs> but ultimately the consensus is a conversation is uh, not negotiable here. This far left activist is now gonna call his comrades and say look out for you guys. Who's his comrades? Is that a particular word choice for any given reason? People are commies, so, I mean, okay. that's the language they use as well, so. Okay. So typically speaking, who dislikes you in Seattle? People with green hair and pink hair and purple hair, calling me transphobic, saying I'm anti-LGBTQ. Support trans youth, bro, I hate that, bro. Bro. I'm not gonna say too much about it, bro, but like, pushing that on kids is insane. Like, I feel bad for those kids out there that like, have parents that pu are pushing their sexual, you know, identity on them when they they're not even worried about that. As kids, you're not worried about what you like sexually. You're not worried about what your gender is. You're not confused about that. You find that out on your own. You find out what you like on your own. They're pushing that on your kids. Like like imagine saying to yourself, "Oh, when my kid grows up." He better be gay. Like what? Saying I hate the homeless. Every That's agenda crazy. they want to champion, they consider me the enemy. I'm not gonna let some soy boy tell me where I can record and where I can walk. Are you kidding me? And the funny part is, I'm in support of the LGBTQ community. Oh, here we go. Same. I don't mind it, but it's just stop trying to push y'all agendas and stuff on people, and then when we try to give y'all criticism or constructive criticism, don't react like a little baby. Like. Oh. Okay, here we go. Did you see someone? Yeah, yeah. Anytime there's somebody who's who has green or purple hair, I get a little nervous. But <laughs> it, it was like yesterday, man, where you had protesters, you know, literally up against the faces of police officers as they formed a, a human wall uh, trying to mm. protect the East Precinct. But we all know the story. City leaders allowed the activists to take over this entire city block, and it was just chaos. But for better context from the inside of the protest, let's say goodbye to Jonathan for now and say hello to Mark Anthony. Has anybody here ever heard of the French Revolution before? Does anybody here know what happened to the people who did not get on board with the French Revolution? Say it louder. Say it louder. This is not a party. And we have a mission to accomplish. So I met up with Mark to try and understand what actually happened during the protests. CHOP officially started in 2020 on, I would say it was June 8th. It all started with the death of George Floyd. Saw the <laughs> This part gonna piss me off. Justice of a man dying from having a knee in his neck while being subdued by two police officers while others were trying to help him and other police officers were holding them back. Me, myself, I've always been passionate about social injustice and civil rights issues. And so that was my wake up call to come out and be a part of it. It started here. Really, this was the intersection. Right People here. were coming here on a daily basis and we were protesting. Yeah. And so basically we had, you know, just face off, just protesting, very peaceful. And then that would go on all day and it would go on into the night. And during the night, it would get, uh, more aggressive. 
most. Level of aggression that the police operated with in response to a few bad players is what led to more and more people showing up. And at this point, the National Guard had been called in. It's not just police we're facing off now with. They were using tear gas on us every night or pepper spray or whatever it is, but essentially it's a chemical weapon. I tried multiple times to have officers come and speak to us, let us know oh, how they felt okay. about the situation, show us that you understand what we saw, the rest of the world saw was wrong, and let us know that you're not with them. After days of protesters clashing with police, on June 7th, a man drove his car towards a crowd near 11th and Pine and shot a protester who tried to stop him. Chaos ensued, leading the mayor to order the barriers to be- A whole bunch of people that do this ain't got nothing better to do with their lives, bro. It's just, it's a whole bunch of stupidness. They, they don't get that. But at the same time, to each their own, man. I don't really, you know what I'm saying? It don't, it don't bother me, but. People are just fighting for the wrong things. Don't even know it. Be moved, and the police evacuated the precinct the next day, boarding it up on their way out. As protesters <sighs> occupied Capitol Hill with little to no opposition, Chaz was born. When the police first abandoned this building, I came, and I came expecting the protest. And I showed up, and I was confused like everybody else. I believe the cops left because they realized that the tactics that they were using yeah. to, in their mind, de-escalate the situation was making it way worse. They had no right to abandon the people that live in this area. The people that... They realized how stupid y'all looked and y'all wasn't going to give up on it. So they said, we got better things to do. And they went on about their business. I were living here at the time, couldn't get adequate medical services. Do you think the cops should have stayed here? If I was in yep. charge of the police, yep. I would not have had them abandon that building. So how do you guys then organize and decide, we're going to make CHOP or Chaz? That morning, there were still thousands of people that showed up to protest because we didn't know the cops were gone. A lot of people showed up, and now we didn't have the same direction of, let's go and direct our frustration at the police. Instead, we're just there by ourselves. And so we decided, instead of just being here and being negative, we're going to actually make this a positive space. We don't know when the cops are coming back, but right now we know that we have this space. So real quick, what do we think this is? What happened here? An overdose? An overdose? Yeah. Is it fentanyl related? I have no idea. Okay. Overdose. Can't say I'm surprised. Yeah. There's a lot of drugs in this area. At the time when this was going down, there were a few of us who had been protesting from before the area was an Occupy Zone. Myself, Raz Simone, a few others. So people at this point were recognizing us as some of the leaders. I gathered a group of people. I said, all right, we got to come up with some new names. And somebody said, well, what about Capitol Hill Occupy protests? Chop. Misconception might be that you guys show up here, we're gonna start our own society or civilization, and then they see you guys asking for materials. In reality, it's a protest. It was a protest. Okay. Yeah, this is actually the vice president of my nonprofit. Uh, Tracy was here every day with me at Chop as well. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Okay. So we went back to the BLM garden in Cal Anderson Park to understand how the protesters used homeless people to achieve their goals. Uh, so here we have members from the homeless community and people that are here to help them. So we actually invited the homeless to Chop. And the reason that we invited them is because, as I mentioned, we wanted to defend that police precinct. But we knew people are just going to wait until people are gone in the middle of the night, and then they're going to try to break in and damage the building. The best way to make sure that we could get people to stay here regularly was to invite the homeless in. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to come and sleep on the concrete for 30 days, Very you know, in a, in a row. And I'm not it's going. clearly succeeded, right? And so, yeah, we said, you know what, if you guys want to support this movement, we yeah. will help support you. And so we regularly had food out here for the homeless. We were giving away clothes for the homeless. Were any of you guys here during CHOP? Why are you uh, it's public property. We're just asking a question. We don't have to talk. Well, we're just talking about CHOP. Yeah, we're just taking a look at the garden that was formed here. But we see it's a camp. We're trying to tear down the garden, and that's why we're here. Oh, so you guys are here to prevent the garden being taken down? Yeah, they're trying to, they're trying to take this whole area out and put it in a pickleball court. These people are not trustworthy. They're not trustworthy. Why is that? Can you explain why we're not trustworthy? Please don't film me. I don't consent. To so fucking weird, bro. Well, can, can you elaborate? I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to elaborate. Please. Well, so why is he frustrated at us trying to leave the garden? They, they, they think you guys are untrustworthy. That you're gonna go, baby. You might be right wing or something, and you might be publicizing this in a way that might slander us. Got it. Yet despite this, not not realizing that they slander themselves. Make your own selves look stupid. Strong mistrust. This homeless guy who was here during CHOP came over to talk to me. You were here during CHOP? I was here for all of CHOP. Is there a division and conflict within CHOP from the get-go? No, it was, it, was, it was peaceful. It was unity. And then it just it went to hell. And how many people died here while it did last? 
Yeah, two. Who shot who and why? I don't want to get into that. Okay. Did you see it? Yeah. Okay. Do you think that was the nail in the coffin of CHOP and what it represented at the time? Or? I think so. We've got one person killed, uh, potentially others injured. We don't know. We don't know what the incident was. But the Seattle Police Department cannot go in and has not confirmed. That is correct. How can that stand in America? You guys are that afraid? There's no way. There's no way. He's dying. He needs your help. This is your job. So imagine, imagine this, right? So y'all, y'all try to defund the police, essentially, and say that y'all don't need police. Y'all are going against the police, arguing at police. Government assistance, I might as well say at this point. People that work for the government. And then y'all go and ask for the help. Saying, are y'all that scared to go in? They got lives. They don't got time to worry about y'all foolishness, bro. They don't. They literally don't. I want to make sure that we have not been cleared to move into You are clear. We're giving you the clear. We will. Shut up, bro. We'll make sure you're clear. If he dies, it's on you guys. You could have saved his life. You could have, but you're not. It's on y'all, bro. Y'all being. I'm, I'm gonna just shut up, bro. Because it's a black light. And look at this video from. Because of. I'm so sick of this because I'm black stuff. Is it because I'm black? It's a black light. That's why it doesn't matter. Live stream cameras just before 3 a.m. More than a dozen shots are heard. And I guarantee it was a black person shooting, man. Like video that captures what sounds like more than a dozen gunshots and then at 259 at the very top of your screen you can see that white jeep plow into the cement barricades and it is abundantly clear to our detectives people had been in and out of the car after the shooting detectives are trying to get information from witnesses but as has been the case in other crime scenes up in this area people are not being cooperative with our request for help they uh, tried to offer aid. They were offering aid for about 25 minutes. We were calling police, telling them, come in, you guys are safe. We're right here. It's very easy to access, but we need to get this man to a hospital. And for 25 minutes, I watched that man bleed out on the table. And um, man, it was actually one of, the, one of the ugliest things I've ever seen, not just because I had to witness somebody die, but because I also had to witness how the people around were reacting to watching this young man die. Um, a lot of people were just concerned about getting the video on their, their social media and recording it. Okay. It, was, it was incredibly frustrating. So you, you watched this young man die in front of your eyes? Yes. Right there? Yeah. But this was our medic station. There was a lot of things that was going on um, within CHOP. I was almost assaulted in CHOP as well, and I called the police, and they never showed up. Can you explain the relationship between the police and the protesters at the time? I wouldn't either, bro. Like, they not they don't realize how props to them for thinking that they're doing something positive and having a good, good understanding behind it, a good meaning behind it, but they also don't realize how much damage they're doing as well. Like if most if most people, especially the left, could put their like the two cents together, put their two brain cells together, bro, and just think for a second, am I the problem? Things would be a lot more simpler and easier in life. And was one of the goals of CHOP to cut the police funding in half? Separate no, group. Separate group? That was a separate group because, again, like I said, there was two sets of protesters. There okay. was the protesters who wanted to defund the police, and there was the protesters like myself who wanted to keep the police but maybe um, hold them accountable. My question has always been, why... Are y'all holding y'all self accountable, though? No. Did the police evacuate their building? Seattle PD. Yeah. Maybe I can ask him. Were you out by chance? Yes. Do you have any thoughts on it? No? They don't want to talk. <laughs> they don't want to talk that they abandoned their motherfucking police station. Excuse my language. And as we walked to the police precinct that was abandoned by the police, leading to the formation of CHOP, Mark began to share why he thinks the government's current stance on drugs and harm reduction is racist. Why has it become a white supremacy thing? Because a lot of it is geared towards the white community. Now look at the 90s during the crack epidemic. Crack cocaine. The problem is crack cocaine. They were en masse beating black people, throwing them in jail, locking them up for as long as they could. And now we see, let's decriminalize it. Let's give them safe injection sites. Let's make sure that they get free housing. Look at how the response was different from white to black. They have reversed their stance when it's white people that are the ones that are overdosing, doing that. Okay, uh, back in the day, for most cases, it was just pure hatred. Some of it was. Most of it was. I'll be honest about that. Most of it was. But nowadays, bro, it's nothing like that, bro. It's just 
I'm about to get that deep into it, but like, it's not even like that. It's not like that at all. Crime and drugs. Now all of a sudden we need to decriminalize this. So you're saying if these were predominantly black people using these same drugs, the stance would be different? Exactly. I'm saying that's what it is in general. Okay. When white people are going through something, the government will step in and help them. Oh, the farmers are having crop spelling? Oh, you're going to... The typical what? Hold on. Predominantly black people using these same drugs, the stance would be different? Exactly. I'm saying that's what it is in general. Okay. When white people are going through something, the government will step in and help them. The typical fentanyl overdose victim was 23 i mean i said i said 23 Jesus, i need to go to sleep it's three in the morning 32.5 plus 6.7 years of age range 19 to 57 male compared with male and caucasian 50 percent compared with damn so yeah he yeah no no. Oh, the farmers are having crop spelling? Oh, you're going to get all kind of grants and this and that. Do you think the United States is one of the most racist nations out there? The. I think that they were victimized in the past and they are still being victimized now. Activism seemed to be within the DNA of Seattle. And I saw a free Palestine rally in downtown Seattle that same day. From your perspective, do you see any parallels to what we discussed in shop and this? Yeah, once again, I see it as a genocide. I see it as people of a different ethnicity, of a different skin tone than the European descent that is the, the majority and dominant race. And for the last six weeks, they've been launching a genocide against completely innocent women and children. The average age of the fatalities in God's is five years old. Arrest Joe Biden. Yeah, I do agree with that statement right there. I agree with that. Okay. And all I'm saying is Israel, it has a right to exist. Imagine if you're an American. And we had people from another country come over and rape and murder and torture 1,200 people here. Palestinians were offered a country. Okay. Three times offered, three times not accepted. Okay. I'm just saying, educate yourself about the real history. So Men, this, grandmothers. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're trying to negotiate with an organization that believes in your total annihilation, how do you negotiate with them? Any points of education someone watching might be able to learn from? Uh, don't trust the police. Okay. I mean, I swear to God, you know, I got locked up once in there. They, they've done... Don't trust anybody with drone on eyebrows. Don't do that either. And the worst that they can to me, so... What do you mean? I mean, I got put in jail for jaywalking, but I did a year. Did you do anything else? What? That seems pretty atypical, right? Right. Point of proof. Shall I jaywalk? A few cops are there. I'm just curious. Okay, I've j <laughs> we're trying to prove a point. She got arrested for jaywalking. Do you have any thoughts on the cops out here? Uh, honestly, just like understand why we're here. We're here to support something that really matters. This jaywalking stuff is just like real stupid. Do you think a long-term ceasefire is viable? Do you think that will happen? I think it's possible on the basis of you know working people around the world and in the region getting organized together. I'm, I wasn't going to say nothing about it. That's why I just let it go by. But jaywalking is for a reason. I've seen lots of people, sadly, get hit on the side of the road for jaywalking. Whether it's at a crosswalk when it, the light is red and about to turn green and it says stop, don't walk yet. Or whether it's just on the highway or in the middle of an intersection in general where there isn't a crosswalk. So, not, yeah, that, it makes sense fight for that. I'm a socialist, so I think okay. we need a socialist solution. Stop getting into formation! How to come together for creative and positive. I noticed you have the decriminalized poverty beanie. Um, would you like to share what that means? I mean, yeah, criminalize the homeless. And as the protests marched on, I struck up conversation with this homeless guy who began to tell me what was really going on out here on the streets. Oh my God, the drugs are a pandemic. Okay. They need to have a better solution other than the DES buildings that they're trying to force uh, low income or disabled uh, people to move into. Because it's like putting everyone who has an, an, an addiction or a problem, the same problem, in one building. It's like a project. Would you like to share anything too? Absolutely. How is it living on the streets out here in Seattle? It's, it's rough. It's hard and being trafficked against my will. Right now. What? Um. Do you? Is there anyone we get? There's not. So you're, right now you're being sex trafficked. What do you mean? The, we're not allowed to speak on it. We're not allowed to talk about it. I have, thankfully, That's crazy. gotten out of this part of it. Okay, so you're good right now. 
um, only because I haven't been found. They basically let you live your day-to-day -day life and in the process you literally have to, because they won't allow you to have your identification, won't allow you to get a job, you have no choice but to sell yourself. Do you feel inhuman out here? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I feel very... Yeah, it's tough people out there living like that as we speak, as you're watching this video. That's that's sad, man. Shunned and very casted away because they make me feel like a monster out here. See, Maybe somebody needs to start a nonprofit for the traded. I actually do know someone who has a program for that, if you're interested. Really? Um, her name's Annie Lobert, mm -hmm. and anywhere across the country, she says she'll get you into a safe house. That's something you're interested in. Um, she may not answer, but let me give her a call. <laughs> What's wrong? I have nightmares every night. Yeah. I have to literally have fentanyl to be able to go to sleep. Because if I don't, I wake up with night tears. Oh. I'm literally losing my mind out here, and I appreciate it. Of course. Oh, but can do it. Okay. Thank you. All right, stay safe. Bye. Only a block away, I stumbled upon the black Hebrew Israelites preaching. I wonder if she looked into it. On the streets. Hey, what's going on here? We're out here to actually teach our people who they truly are. And who are your people? Are representing uh, black people? The Israelites, God's okay. chosen people. God said that He created His chosen people, the Israelites, which will be the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of today, to be above all other nations of people that are upon the face of the earth. What did the Lord, Most High God say about the other people? They are nothing, uh -huh. but be like unto spittle. But be like unto spit, right? That's how the Most High God feels about them. Right? What well, you know, am I, do I qualify as a spit? When you actually read the Bible, you find out that the Most High God does not actually love everybody. He right. only loves his chosen people. Yes. Okay, so from your perspective, uh -huh. God is in support of whatever may happen in Gaza? Is that kind of what's going on? Support of war. Okay. Uh, but I got to answer your so, question through the Bible. So God is anti-peace, pro-war. That's right. Right? Interesting, okay. Yeah, he's not about peace. The Lord is a man of war! Uh-huh. Even all the way back in the Bible days, he's always about war. He's about an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and revenge. All right, top enemies of God from God's perspective. Uh -huh. He isn't wrong about that part, but, um... Uh, As you in the it. Bible. Uh -huh. Okay, Caucasians? Yep. Uh, Chinese? Yeah. Japanese? Arabs. Arabs and then modern day Jew, Jews. Yeah, and, and, and the the Jews, yeah. Day Jewish men. He created them to be destroyed, right? So. Wait, I was created to be destroyed? Yes, because that's why the Most High God says. That's yeah. weak. As someone who may not agree with your religious beliefs, uh -huh. should I have any incentive or interest in doing so if my whole means of existence is just to die and to be destruction? That's a very good question. Yes, you should take interest. Should I just kill myself at this point? I'm going to show you what you're going to have to do right. to get mercy in the lord's okay. kingdom any of the other nations that are not blacks hispanics native americans who are god's chosen people if these other nations want to have mercy in the most high god's kingdom the entire nation has to repent for what they've done wait, 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 hold on. what sorry for what what did i do well you're walking on stolen ground right? what? but you are too because if you really think about it let's really get down to the nitty-gritty native americans were here first so if you forget for a second what you think he knows, Native Americans and only Native Americans were here first. Then we came too, and we decided to stay. You know, not a, not by will, of course. You know what I'm saying. But technically, moral story is we're on stolen ground too, as well. So your point. In this land before it was renamed Seattle, wasn't it called Duwamish? What did I do? Your nation of people, right, enslaved, right, the Native Americans and the Hispanics here in America. Oh my god, that's not how that works, bro. And that's this right here is years ago, bro. Let this go. You wasn't alive for that, you wasn't around for it. America. And the most high God judges as a nation, but America as a whole <sighs> is prophesied to be destroyed with international continental ballistic missiles. IBM, unless, right, unless they show. Right, that they are sorry for what their forefathers have done, right, to our people. That you will bow down with both knees with your face towards the earth. Are you not gonna happen? No, see that? What did I do? Let's slow down here a little bit. God is racist, right? God is racist. Well, that was one of the first verses that we brought up when you came up was Deuteronomy 7 and 6 okay. that he chose the Israelites to be above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Isn't right. that racist? So you, so you are right. That doesn't make him racist. Racist. 
Yeah, is it wrong? Is, is, let me say this. There's nothing wrong with being racist. God is racist. Racist means that you're just for your people. White privilege. That's right. Okay, so I'm a beneficiary of white privilege? That's right. That's right. So you heard it from him yourself. Right. After hearing you guys out, I've decided that I'll get on my knees. Psych! I do anything! I'm innocent! I'm out of here! I'm innocent! Hey, you were nodding your head. You're converted. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear from their teaching why people could identify them as a hate group. Uh, yeah. And He's having some sort of reaction to drugs. Uh, what do you think that is? I think that's a product of this, the living on the streets, man. Every do you day, think he's overdosing on something, something? like this. I don't think he's overdosing. I think he's experiencing what he's experiencing. With the family oh, pushing their, their baby carriage right through it. Right past I have it. a question for you, sir. What are your thoughts on that? You're walking with your family, you see something like that. Is that a concern of yours as a Seattleite? Uh, it is, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Are you tired of seeing things like that? I mean, I, I should hope that it's a solvable problem by now with all of the tax money that we're paying. But unfortunately, that we see different variations of that. Okay. Constantly. Normally, they're members of the homeless community, uh, people that are outcasts from society, things sure. like that. He's, people are avoiding and walking around. He, and they're ignoring him. Sure. They're, we're ignoring this problem like it's not a problem that we should be trying to focus on finding solutions for. It could be a dangerous situation for you. Sure. You don't know how he's going to react. I, I want to offer him help. Dude's bleeding from his face right now. Sure. But I don't know how he's going to react to me. He's going he to put my life in danger, possibly. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's a lack of governmental leadership. Okay. What would you change in the governmental leadership if you could change something? January 6th, none of them had walked out of there alive. Okay. Is he alive right now? Say no to drugs, man. And people walk around his lifeless body almost on the ground here. <laughs> He's going to call. Let's say he called 911. Would someone show up? Yeah, I think somebody would show up. I, I don't think they would, you know, do much more than just wake him up, make sure he's okay, send him on his way. This guy decided to call 911. It'll be interesting if I set a timer to see how long it takes for anyone to get here. If what do you guys think about what's going on here? Hey, pal. Seattle. Seattle. Let's do it. Thank you. Did you wake up, pal? Anybody have Narcan? Anyone have Narcan? Anybody have Narcan? Wake up, pal. Anyone have Narcan? Potential overdose. We got Narcan out here. We have an ambulance on route. Yeah, he's back. Oh, he's out. Probably broke his nose, it looks like. Actually, quite quickly, to give Seattle PD some credit here, that was a three minute, 53 second response. EMT's on site. It's drug related and he doesn't want medical attention. Why is that? That's what he doesn't want. Is he sure. of the mental capacity, given his current state, to even make that like uh, assertion? The only time that we would do anything against his will is if he meets certain criteria by the state for an emergent detention, Got which it. is danger to self, danger to others, um, unable to care for self. What would it strike you as from your experience? Uh, we're seeing a resurgence in meth again. That shit's sad, man. That shit's sad. So. Well, it looks like he decided to get some help. I'm glad. Because he was refusing at first. Will a guy like that end up back in that same van? Some folks that I've run into that are be on their second or third or OD for the day, which at that point we start looking at emergent detention criteria. Yeah. All right, thanks for your time. See ya. It's not safe for anybody. Because of the darkness of the night that was quickly approaching, we said goodbye to Mark and met back up with Jonathan here because apparently this block transforms into a hot spot for open air drug use and crime. We've made it to Third and Pike, the infamous intersection here. We're about to see the worst of the worst, if anything is out here tonight. Last night, Jonathan said it was zombie land. Jonathan, where are we at right now? This is the gateway for tourists here in downtown Seattle. Um, at the same time, it is a notorious epicenter for open air drug use. If we go in there and, and with iPhones, you're, there's going to be a reaction. Okay, it, I mean, it's not going to be a good reaction. So, have you ever had any violent encounters over here? Yeah, man, this is where I've been chased by a guy wielding a knife. A guy, you know, swung a baseball bat at me, and this is a very common path. I run down the street all the time. Fentanyl's everywhere. Yep, yep. There are people not out, pass out. What do we have for sale today? 60 bucks. 60, 60 bucks, bucks for the whole set? That's a DJ set, man. Huh? You boost? No boost. No boost? It's all boosted, man. You know what it is. Stop okay. playing. What are you up to right now? <laughs> We're not selling nothing. All right. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's a fentanyl crisis globally, right? A hundred, well, United States. So they're out here just giving out free fentanyl. Really? It's a non-profit yeah, organization. Like this is cap. Right no here, cap. Here. You guys are stoned right now. Wait, whoa. Oh, so you guys actually are giving out, and we're yeah. cool. You want one? Yeah. You guys are giving free fentanyl? What the fuck?
Yeah, you want one? Who this wants, is real? Who wants free fed and all? Line up. Can't make this stuff up. I mean, he has a bag of. Line up. Come wait, on. Wait, wait, why, why are you doing this? Line up. This is clearly a chaotic evil force line at play here. I've never seen anything like this. I don't know about this. You're gonna kill someone. Look here. Come on. That's Guys, no. Get in line. Oh, no, go tell everybody to get in line. Wait, wait, gonna, why are you giving this? It's gonna overdose someone. Because this is how you clean up the streets. You Ow. give it away for free. Yes. Yeah, by trying to make them kill themselves. Bro, this is a crazy ass video, dog. This is crazy. That's crazy, bro. Giving away free fentanyl for what reason? Yes. Wow. Okay. And, and the government will pay for it all. At certified introverts. Yeah, there you go. Well, what's in the blue? Wait, what is the objective here? It was complete chaos out here, and I had no clue what was going on. Are you selling any of this stuff too? Was it boosted? Uh, well, I don't know. I got it from some people, so some might be boosted that. You can easily jump on one of these King County Metro buses and then go to Target, boost, and come right back and set up shop. This is an easy transportation corridor. About fentanyl. Yeah, we are. I think it's a pandemic for sure. I think it's done on purpose. I know I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but China's trying to destabilize the United States. I don't know, but what I do believe is if we can fight a war, why can't we fight fentanyl? That's crazy. Sure. It's being done on purpose. I've had two people die on me, friends, and I've saved one person's life right there in that alley. So okay. after talking to this lady, my spidey senses went off. So we decided to book it right as this guy began to follow us. Yeah, he's following us right now. No, don't, don't worry about it. Good. Right. Just trust me on this one. Okay. If I say we're good, we're good. I know this dude, man. I've seen him a long time. Where you been, man? Hey, hey, Jonathan. Stay. What's up? Who's coming at me? Let's go. Thank you. Tyler got my back. But you got whacked. This is my life, man. You need to join me out here more often. This is what I'm talking about. This guy's still following us, by the way. Don't worry about him. I mean, I have no idea what he's gonna do. Two guys claim, claiming to be part of a nonprofit Give giving away fentanyl. fentanyl pills, also known as blues. Right. This city is out of control. Right as we thought we'd escaped the scene with our lives, I heard this. Hello? How you guys doing? Do you guys mind sharing a little more real quick? A little more about what? What your angle is and what you guys are up to? Violence or, or fentanyl? Gun violence? Everything. I support all of it. So let's kill everything with a smile. Got it. So you want them? This dude is a villain, bro. This dude is a villain. To die while high? Yes. So are we getting trolled here? What's? I have no idea. Man. Okay. What's going on here? You guys will see me. This is just a. This is an American tragedy, man. You see, you got you got cop cars. They don't come out. They, they, that's the problem. Hey, quick, push, push. I even tried to wave him down. I could be bleeding out. I could be bleeding out, right? Yeah. I don't know why they're not stopping. Okay. What is this? I literally picked this up on the ground. This is what you call our production. Sure. These supplies are fueling this drug epidemic on the streets. This is taxpayer dollars. You have needles, you have fentanyl test strips. All we're doing is enabling this. So we're paying taxes to feed these bums addictions. And a lot of other things, bro. It's a damn shame, bro. Because we don't want you to OD. We don't want you to die. The whole Bible it's not moderation. Do you think you guys moderation? are self-moderating? Absolutely. Okay, have you seen people overdose out here and die? No. You've not seen a single person? I've seen, I've seen people be accused of overdosing, but they're still breathing. Do you think people are dying due to fentanyl? I... No. Not at all. Ma'am, ma'am, we just want to make sure you don't die on the streets. Exactly. I think okay. we're in, the, in agreement, though. We'll, we'll get out of your hair, though. She's nodding out. Ma'am, are you okay? Okay, I just want to make sure. Sure. I get it. You gotta check. You, we were gonna go guy's through the alley. To, guy's about to pass out in the alley right now. Yeah, he's tweaking. That's what you call tweaking. It looks like Gotham with the smoke coming down. And then McDonald's right here. <laughs> How is it working at McDonald's out here? Is it worth it? It's okay. <laughs> okay. Ain't no way you could be getting paid enough to work at McDonald's right here in this. Look at this. The nickname of this McDonald's is? No. It's called McStabby's for a reason. <laughs> this is, I mean, look, look, look at this. Right here, right, right, right next to the McDonald's. Question for you, ma'am. Uh, how is it working security out here on this particular stretch? <laughs> What's up? Why do you chuckle, miss? Because it's very bad here. It's bad, right? How do you have the cojones to do this on a daily basis? You're ballsy. I just want them to leave our city. That's all. Yeah. That location, that was Starbucks. Got it. Okay. 
They're now closed. You've got the Amazon Go store closed because you can't do business in the downtown core when there's so much crime sure. and open air drug use. Mental illness, man. The guy's just talking to himself. He's pooping. He's taking a piss. Wait, you're taking a poop? You taking a pee? Yeah. Wait, you're about to take a dump? He's gonna take a piss. He almost had his pants down, man. Then he saw us. Yeah. Look them back up. Let's just keep going. Let's make haste. That guy's giving us mega bad looks. You feel safe here, ma'am? Uh, because it feels extremely unsafe out here and I've seen multiple people overdose and... No, it sucks out here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of it. Yeah. yeah. I thought, I thought we were doing something about it and I haven't seen any visible action, you know. Okay. I'm sick of it. I would like the city to actually, I, I believe we voted for um, a no public use. The state law makes public drug use a position. Girls missing following cities and... Sure. I think that passed. Do you have kids or grandkids? No. Okay. If you had kids or grandkids, would you raise them here in Seattle? No. Hell no. Security. Have you ever uh, been in a dangerous encounter out here? Not necessarily this area, but where I work in Capitol Hill, like okay. more on 13th. Uh, have you seen any overdoses or deaths on the streets? Of course. What are your thoughts on everything going on here? People need help. People yeah. need support. Like I'm going through a crazy situation. I have I have kids, and um, I'm homeless on these streets, and I can't find anybody to help me. Oh, you're homeless as well. Yeah. And you're working yeah. too. Oh, I work three jobs. Yeah, and I have three teenagers. Damn and a one-year-old. We get kicked out of everywhere because the age difference of, of my kids oh, and the baby. Kids. Yeah, and my grandbaby. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, I understand how hard it is to get yeah. anything in this in this state. And are you clean? Yes. We're staying in a motel right now. Yeah, hopefully this gives you another night or something, but okay, of course. Amazing. Yeah, no, you're one of the Thank few you. people we've met today that said they've been clean and they've, they're working multiple jobs and yeah, you have a family. We got kicked out on um, Thanksgiving. Yeah. I think people like you are the ones who need to be prioritized. Good to meet you. Bye-bye. Facts, bro. Shout out to her, man. Do a, keep doing your thing. Bye, yeah. See ya. We have police right here. Let's see if I can say hi real quick, actually. Hey there, question. Question for you, sir. <laughs> see, I'll feed you on top. So I wanted to ask what your pension for risk is at this point. There's, <laughs> there's a ridiculous situation where I've been attacked with a knife. Okay. I don't know if we want to go there, but it's it's driving distance. I'm down. You're down. I mean, it's 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 really a messed up situation. Right across the street from Seattle City Hall. But as we drove to the location, we saw someone getting arrested in real time. I would guess we have an overdose in front of us. Cops, EMT, ambulance, fire truck? Crime scene, maybe? Is that blood on the wall? Hold on. And of course, Jonathan was already on the scene. This is what I was calling you, bro. This man was allegedly starting a fire in the alleyway, so. What happened, officers? <laughs> Man, I'm uh, I'm going to hot dogs. Oh, my mama, I don't care about jail. Y'all can take me to prison. I swear to God, y'all can take me to prison. What did you do? I don't, that's what I'm saying. Well, it appears that he, he lit his jacket, he says, maybe trying to stay warm here. I'm insane. We know. You lit your jacket to stay warm, buddy. We know you're insane. We know. know the guy he recognized me he keeps saying i'm the asian guy because he knows i go out here and cover the city but look i mean this is look at all the drug paraphernalia i mean you have fentanyl foil you've got sure. the, the meth how long do you think the tenure of an officer here in seattle is <laughs> how can you do this every day tsd not only dealing with this insanity on the streets they have to deal with the far left activists the, the cop haters sure. you know people even on the city council who hate police officers trying to defund officers yeah. i mean i commend all our officers on the streets of seattle right now who come out here you have to pay me a thousand dollars an hour to do this shit. To deal with all these cases. But in a culture where hating cops is cool, I won't be surprised if kids eventually stop wanting to be cops when they grow up and want to be, I don't know, YouTubers? If Chop has taught us anything, it's that the same people who want to abolish the police are the first to ask where they are when the safety of them or their loved ones are jeopardized. Exactly. He's dying. He needs your help. This is your job. The laws, the police that enforce those laws, and the people that respect the authority of an almost kind of sort of democratically elected government that we have is the only thing protecting our fragile civilization from falling apart. Uh, you can check me out at Chosho at C H O E S H O W. Uh, either on. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely check out his page, bro. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna screenshot that. Hold on. On X or YouTube. So our nonprofit is called the Chop Art Nonprofit. Our focus is providing a platform for artists from underprivileged communities. Check them out. Link in description. Yeah, shout out to them too, man. But like I said, yo, 
you might want to rethink some of the things that they're doing because sometimes you, you're not doing good, you're doing harm. And thanks for watching. Also, whoever has the most viewed TikTok or you. But yeah, anyway, that's the end of this video, man. If you stayed this far, let me know your con comments on it. And yeah, we're going pretty much. Peace. Make sure you hit the subscribe button.